Last time on Der Richter und sein Henker. A Swiss Dorf Polizist from Twan, Alphonse Klenin, discovers the body of Police Lieutenant Ulrich Schmidt in a car at the side of the road. Schmidt has been shot through the temple. Commissaire Berlach, a hardened investigator with an international reputation, is dispatched by his boss, Dr. Lucius Lutz. Both men are highly opinionated, having studied in what at the time was the newly formed field of criminology. Berlach wants to keep the death out of the papers and visits Schmidt's subletted department to establish a cover story with Frau Schönla, the woman he rents from. Schmidt will be gone on a work trip to an undisclosed location and the police may need to stop by to retrieve important files over the next few days. Bialach takes a folder from Schmidt's desk and walks out, back onto the streets of Bern, to continue his investigation. Hallo, liebe Zuschauer, herzlich willkommen to the second episode, also das zweite Kapitel. We're doing the second chapter of Der Richter und sein Henker. I got some great feedback and more views than I expected, actually, from the first episode. Uh, so uh, I thought I definitely should continue this. And we're going to definitely finish the, uh, the book Der Richter und sein Henker. And after that, the sky's the limit, so... Um, one thing I've changed here, this is going to be a bigger font this time, and I'm going to try to mark off individual sentences based on some feedback I got. So we're going to try that. Let me know how it works out. And without any more introduction, any more wasting time, let's get right into it. You know how this works. I start by reading, and then I'm going to analyze some things. Uh, and we'll keep on going till we're done with this chapter. So we got a couple pages, but it's way bigger print than last time. So it should be about the same, maybe even shorter than the first episode. All right. Zweites Kapitel. Tief in Gedanken versunken, aß er gegen seine Gewohnheit nicht in der Schmiedstube, sondern im Du Theatre zu Mittag, aufmerksam in der Mappe blätternd und lesend, die er von Schmieds Zimmer geholt hatte, und kehrte dann nach einem kurzen Spaziergang über die Bundesterrasse gegen zwei Uhr auf sein Büro zurück, wo ihn die Nachricht erwartete, dass der tote Schmied nun von Biel angekommen sei. Okay, long one, of course, just like the other chapter, it starts off really long, so the sentence boundary is here, and of course we start up here. So this whole thing ooh, is one sentence, so we're going to obviously go slow. Now this isn't like the other uh, chapter when there was like a long embedded clause in the middle of it. This is actually just sort of pretty straightforward, because there's like und, it's just really basically two normal size sentences together. So, to start off, tief in Gedanken versunken. All right, what does this word look like? Sunken away, sunken down. Tief in Gedanken versunken, versunken deep in thought, sunk deep in thought. Aß er gegen seine Gewohnheit nicht in der Schmiedstube. This is really odd, okay, to me, Schmiedstube. The fact that the guy who died is Schmidt, and he eats somewhere, his normal place where he eats is Schmidtstube. I don't know what the author was thinking with this. I mean, is this some kind of joke? Like, is this some kind of, is this supposed to be some kind of reference or symbolism? I don't understand. But understand that Schmidtstube, at least directly, literally in the story, is not related to Schmidt. Herr Schmidt, the, uh, der Polizeileutnant, der leider ermordet ist. Leider ermordet wurde. It has nothing to do with him. <laughs> Eine Stube is a parlor. But when you talk about um, eine Stube where you eat, usually that means like a restaurant, right? Uh, a re restaurant, if you look up on Google Images, like eine Stube, or you could even look up Schmiedstube because this book is so freaking famous, a bunch of places named their, their restaurant Schmiedstube. Um, well, I don't want to say that for sure. Because it's possible that this is just like the most... This is like the McDonald's of the 40s or something. I don't know. 
um, which may be why it was included, but either way, uh, maybe it's like a guy named McDonald gets killed and then the detective goes and eats McDonald's. I don't know. But in this case, Oss, this is a, one of the uh, irregular simple pasts, right? So that's just Essen, right? He ate against his Gewohnheit. Gewohnheit is, comes from Gewohnen, to be used to. So eine Gewohnheit is a used to-ness, a used to-ness, right? Which would mean something you're used to, uh, a habit, right? So he ate, so sunk deep in thought, he ate uh, out of his normal habit, not in the Schmiedstube, the Schmied restaurant, sondern, rather, im du Theatre zu Mittag, right, zu Mittag, sondern im du Theatre zu Mittag, right, rather in the du Theatre zu Mittag. Right, du Theatre, there's these, this is French. So it's in the, the theater, but that's just the name of the place. At midday, for lunchtime. Zu Mittag means at midday or at noon, but it's usually used referencing lunchtime, basically. Uh, or in this case, it certainly is. Aufmerksam in der Mappe blätternd und lesen. Lesend. So this is the uh, progressive form. Blätternd. Lesend, all right? So, ein Blatt, you might know as a sheet of paper. It also means a leaf, which seems a little weird, but then you think of English, a leaf of paper. Oh, right, loose leaf paper. So the connection is there in English, even though it has nothing to do with Blatt. Or it doesn't sound alike, at least. So, blättern, so this is the verb, blätter. This is the verb, lesen. Hope I don't have to tell you what this one means. But blättern, oh sorry, boundary is here, blättern, blättern, okay, let's bring back the trusty, the trusty helper sheet here. Blättern, so leaf, looks like an N, <laughs> blättern, to leaf through, okay. Durchblättern is also a way to say it, but it's the durch is a little superfluous. So to leaf through something, to to go, you know, like like doing this, you know, like like you know, what's going on, right? Okay. So aufmerksam, attentively. So die Mappe, you should remember, does not mean map; it means a folder. So what's he doing in der Mappe blätternd und lesend? So this is describing how he aß, how he ate. All right. So the reason why this is in the progressive is you can put verbs in the present progressive tense to uh, to make them uh, uh, adverbs. Right. This is basically being they're acting as adverbs. So how did he eat against his uh, usual habit of eating in the Schmiedstube and then rather sitting in du Theatre zu Mittag. How did he do all that? Attentively, leafing through and reading in der Mappe, right, in the folder, or just doing it to the folder. Leafing through or reading the folder, and reading the folder. Die Mappe, die Mappe, so this is die Mappe, die, what's this referring to? Worauf bezieht das, worauf bezieht das sich? Hier. Mappe. Okay, in der Mappe, so dativ, so it's feminine, die er von Schmidts Zimmer geholt hatte, that he had, had, gotten from Schmidts Zimmer, from Schmidts room, his bedroom. Und kehrte dann nach einem kurzen Spaziergang, and, right, so this is going to be zurück, the, so kehr, zurückkehren, right here, zurückkehren, so this is where this clause ends. So how are we, so it, this is one of those sentences everyone thinks is impossible, but don't worry, I promise it's not impossible to understand these sentences the first time you read them, because you just get used to uh, what what the endings are probably going to be, right, based on the context. So as soon as I saw Kiate here, I, I knew in my head it's probably going to be zurück at the end. But. Uh, und Kiate dann nach einem kurzen Spaziergang, spazieren, to walk, gang is a going, like going, 
the nominative of gehen. Spaziergang is a walk. Okay, a walk. So spazieren, to walk. Gang is a, a path or going. Going, walking, a, a walk. So after a short walk, über die Bundesterrasse, über, over the Bundesterrasse, this is a place in the city of Bern, it's Bundesterrasse, so the state terrace, Bundes, so you probably have heard of Germany referred to as, like, usually in official capacity as uh, das Bundesland, right, Bundes means like federal or national or relating to the government, die Terrasse is the terrace, basically, the, the like a wide or higher greenish space. Bundesterrasse. So you can Google image this. You can look this up on Google Images and you'll see what it looks like. It's a real place. So over the Bundesterrasse, gegen zwei Uhr, gegen zwei Uhr, against, okay, but when we say against regarding time, it's a way to say at about that time. Wir treffen uns gegen vier Uhr, right? We'll be meeting at about four o'clock. Okay, so then Kerte, da, 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 da. What, how is he zurückkehren? Where is he going? Auf sein Büro. Okay, er kehrte, so to simplify this, er kehrte auf sein Büro zurück. He returned to his office. Auf sein Büro. Uh, neuter, accusativ. And so how did he return to his office? Then, he then returned to his office after a short walk over the Bundesterrasse at around 2 o'clock. All right. And what, did, what awaited him there? Okay. Auf sein Büro zurück, wo ihn die Nachricht erwartete, dass der tote Schmied nun von Biel angekommen sei. Okay. Wo, so where him, the news or message, die Nachricht, Right, Nachricht is a news or a message where him, where the news awaited him. Erwarten means to await. Where the news awaited him that the dead Schmidt, right, the dead Schmidt, Schmidt who is dead, nun now von Biel angekommen sei. Ankommen means to arrive, and here's Konjunktiv zwei, Konjunktiv zwei with sei. So this is again reported information. So this is saying. Um, he didn't observe this as a fact, but rather he must have heard it from someone. Or where, where the dead Schmidt, or where, where he awaited news that the dead Schmidt should now have arrived from Biel. Okay, should now have arrived from Biel. Should have, right? He expected it. That's not the reality, though. We don't know what the reality is. It's his opinion. That's why Konjunktiv is five. Okay, next sentence. It's going to go from here to here to here to here. Okay, so next sentence is going to end here. So help help me read along here. You know, read out loud in your in the comfort of your own home, if you dare. <laughs> er verzichtete jedoch darauf, seinem ehemaligen äh, Untergebenen einen Besuch abzustatten, den er liebte Tote nicht und ließ sie daher meistens in Ruhe. Okay, er verzichtete jedoch darauf. Okay, this is a helpful verb to know. And it's a very fun sounding German word. It's got all the good sounds that you'd want in a nice German word. Okay. It's the, the phrase is auf etwas verzichten. Okay. Auf etwas verzichten. Okay. That is to, uh, to give up something or to do without something or to, to go without something. Okay. And so that can mean like go without food, right? Auf Essen verzichten. But it can also mean to neglect to do something or to decide not to. So, er verzichtete jedoch, however. So he, however, decided not to or he, he uh, um, chose not to or he uh, uh, passed up on. He passed on, darauf, seinem ehemaligen Untergebenen einen Besuch abzustatten. Okay. His former, his one time, his, his, who, his person who was at one time, his former, untergeben. So this is a nominative form of a verb. Untergeben is uh, giving below, right? So geben, this might be a little confusing, 
But if you remember, es gibt, that's geben, right? Es gibt something there, whatever. Es gibt, so that phrase that should be one of the first things you learn in German. Geben, so it can mean where something actually lies or where something exists. And where does this person lie or exist? Unter, below. Seinem ehemaligen Untergebenen. So what is un, ein, somebody who is an Untergeben? Ein Untergebener Mensch, right? A, what's the word in English? Uh, someone who is below, right? Some, what's the word in English? Uh, so so he, the, the guy who's under him, right? His, man, there really should be, a, there was definitely a word for that I'm not thinking of. Uh, but anyway, that's the fun part of German. You can understand words exactly what they are without having to be able to uh, translate them into English or your language of choice. You can just understand from the parts. So, uh, subordinate. That's what it is. Subordinate. <laughs> Whew, took me about five minutes, but I got it. Er verzichtete jedoch darauf. So he passed up on his former subordinate. What is he doing? Einen Besuch abzustatten. Abstatten? Einen Besuch abstatten. Okay. Besuch abstatten, okay, that is, so abstatten I've only ever seen with Besuch, okay, if it's got a specific meaning, I mean, I kind of got a feeling for what it might mean, but as far as what it directly means, without Besuch, it's not quite clear, um, but einen Besuch abstatten just literally means to pay a visit, right, in English we say pay a visit, they say this verb, abstatten. It's one of those weird specific verbs that just sort of goes... Sometimes the verbs just sort of pair up with certain nouns in German. There's a name for that phenomenon, but I also forget that. I have a lot of memory problems, clearly. No trouble remembering German words, mostly, but other things, for sure. <laughs> uh, so, so he passed up on paying a visit to his former colleague. Why? Den, because... Er liebte Tote nicht. He did not like dead people. That's unfortunate for an investigator of the police, but that's okay, I guess. You can have your, your opinions. Und ließ sie daher meistens in Ruhe. Right? And left them, what, die Toten, er ließ sie daher, for that reason, mostly in Ruhe, right? In peace, right? So he, he let them rest in peace. And the German way to say rest in peace is Ruhe in Frieden, right? Rest in peace. So to leave someone in rest in German is to leave them in peace. So there's sort of a connection going on there. Den Besuch, so we're going to read this next sentence, and that's going to go just to here. Okay. Den Besuch bei Lutz hätte er auch gerne unterlassen, doch musste er sich fügen. Okay. Uh, so, uh, den Besuch, so this is um, moving to the beginning of the sentence, right? This is not the subject, because it's akkusativ. Den Besuch bei Lutz, Dr. Lucius Lutz, if we remember him, Hätte er auch gern unterlassen, okay. He would have also liked, he would have, have also liked to, to uh, leave off, right? To leave off or to leave out. Literally leave below in German. Den Besuch bei Lutz, right? The visit to Lutz, right? He would have also liked to leave out the visit to Lutz, doch musste er sich fügen. Okay, sich fügen, I realize this may be, this may not, I should put things on separate lines, right? Okay, sich fügen, uh, reflexive verb, obviously, sich fügen means to give in to something, okay? Right, in etwas, sich in etwas fügen, All right, that's actually accusative, so I'll add a little note, sich in etwas fügen to give in to something or resign oneself to something, right? right ich habe mich mein Schicksal gefügt, right? I've, uh, I've uh, given in to my fate. I've accepted my fate, right? So he accepts his fate. He obeys, right? He must, he had to accept his fate, right? He had to accept this, that he was going to have to visit Lutz, so. Er verschloss Schmieds Mappe sorgfältig in seinem Schreibtisch, ohne sie noch einmal durchzublättern, zündete sich eine Zigarre an und ging in Lutzens Büro, wohlwissend, dass sich der jedes Mal über die, Fre über die Freiheit ärgerte, die sich der Alte mit seinem Zigarrenrauchen herausnahm. Okay, another decently long sentence. 
Er verschloss, sorry, verschloss, sorry. Er verschloss. This, uh, this is a good lesson to have. This is one that bites me occasionally when I'm not paying attention. I'm just reading without necessarily fully comprehending on occasion. Er verschloss, right? This S Z, why S Z and not doppel S? Because this makes the O an O instead of an O, right? Right, like stoßen, right? To to strike, right? Geek, right? Something. Verschluss. So he he. Versch this is verschließen, right? Er verschluss. He closed. Schmidt's Mappe. Schmidt's folder. Sorgfältig in seinem Schreibtisch. So sorry. Yeah. So he he closed. He did close, but then in this case it means lock, right? He locked it away safely. So he locked it away. Carefully, sorgfältig, in seinem Schreibtisch, right? Dativ means it's already there in the Schreibtisch when he did this. Which makes sense, right? You have to put it in there before you lock it in. So, to answer the, the um, wo oder wohin question, to say Akkusativ oder Dativ for this in, we know it's got to already be in the Schreibtisch when you verschließen, right? When you lock it. Und sie noch einmal durchzublättern, without... Yet one time, right? So that's how Germans say again, another time, without durchblättern. So remember how I said durchblättern basically just means blättern with extra steps, right? Or with just with extra, um, just with an extra durch on it. There's really no change in meaning, really. Um, Und sie noch einmal durchzublättern. So without flipping through it another time. Okay, so he closed or he uh, locked Schmidt's folder carefully in his desk without reading through it or without flipping through it another time. Zündete sich eine Zigarre an, right? Anzünden, right? Anzünden is to light something, to set it aflame, right? He set himself, so he lit himself eine Zigarre, not cigarette, but cigar. Er zündete sich eine Zigarre an und ging in Lutzens Büro. So this guy's name is Lutz, but this is a case where you have to add some extra, extra stuff in the genitiv. So Lutz is his name, but it's not in Lutz Büro, it's in Lutzens Büro. So this en is because we have no pronoun, we have no article here. Okay, there's no, there's no der, die, das, any, any article at all showing us what this does. So the rule for this, it's sort of an obscure rule, but it does come up with the genitive. You need to add the full um, en to it, right? Uh, yeah, you need to add the full en to it, and then the s also for genitive. So in Lutzens, and so it almost it sort of sounds like kind of how it should, right? In Lutzens Büro, in his, in Lutz's Bureau. So he went into Lutz's Bureau, wohl wissend, all right, wholly or entirely knowing, wholly aware, fully aware, dass sich da jedes Mal über die Freiheit ärgerte, der sich der Alte, die sich der Alte mit seinem Zigarrenrauchen herausnahm. Okay. So, fully knowing that Das sich da jedes Mal über die, das, das der, so this is, das sich der, okay, so this is tricky. Der, what is der referring to? Where is there a, a masculine thing that this could be referring to, all right? Fully knowing that sich der jedes Mal über die Freiheit ärgerte. This is the impersonal, well, I guess it's, you call it the personal, der, die, das, okay? So, in German... This, people do this all the time, and especially in slang when they're talking. So we know der, die, das, but der can be a stand-in for er when talking about people. And I'll write the rest, but I think the, the pattern should be quickly obvious. Okay, when talking, generally when talking about people, um, it's a little bit dismissive, right? So the difference between... Um, like for example, and of course these will change with the case, right? So, ich, so ich kenne ihn. I know him. Ich kenne ihn. Ich kenne den. Right? We're taking der to mean er in this case, and don't worry, I'm going to explain what this means exactly. 
Ich kenne den. That's more like, it goes from Ich kenne ihn, I know him, to Ich kenne den, I know that guy. Right? It adds some casualness to it and some distance between, uh, between you and the person you're referring to. So if, depending on who you're talking about, this can be kind of like a little rude and dismissive of people. It's like if you called somebody that guy, right? Like it can be just a normal way to talk, but it can also be like you're intentionally sort of demeaning them a little bit by not referring to them by name. So in this case, Berlach, no fan of this Dr. Lucius Lutz guy, refers to him as der, right? And, well, really, the author does this, but reflecting the emotions, kind of, of Berlach. Dass sich der jedes Mal über die Freiheit ärgerte. So, who, so that guy, knowing that that guy, each time, over the freedom, angered, right? He angered himself each time over the freedom, that guy, right? So, what does that mean, Right? Every time or all the time, he would get upset over the freeness or the freedom, die, die sich der Alte mit seinem Zigarrenrauchen herausnahm. Okay? Die is die Freiheit. Die sich der Alte, the old man, so this time it's referring to Berlach, so it's not being really nice to anybody, <laughs> but it's a little nicer to Berlach, because I guess it's technically true. So, die sich der Alte mit seinem Zigarrenrauchen herausnahm. Okay. Um, the, so the herausnehmen, literally to take out. Okay, so that's herausnehmen. Right? So when you sich etwas herausnehmen, sich, et, sich mit etwas herausnehmen, is to freely do something. Okay? Is to, is to allow oneself to do something. Right? So he would get, he would always be getting upset over the freedom with which the old man would smoke his cigars, right? A freedom that the old man would use or would um, allow himself to smoke cigars, okay? Now we have to combo it up. I think this is good, yep. No, I, so this is gonna go from here. Oh, look, look at this, it's a paragraph. Well, because there's a semicolon, but it's, a, it's the whole paragraph. Let's break this up here, okay? So from here to here. It's going to be a short one, then a really long one, but... Let's forgive the author. Nur einmal, von, nur einmal vor Jahren hat Lutz eine Bemerkung gewagt, okay? Only one time, years ago, had Lutz a comment, eine Bemerkung, a notice or a comment, gewagt. This is wagen to dare, right, in English. So, wagen... To dare something would be to dare to do something, right? So, um, in English, we'd say to dare, uh, well, let's see. Mm. Dare doesn't really go with objects, right, in uh, in English. I'm, I, was, I had to think for a second to check myself, but yeah, you can't really say I dared the, like, I don't know, the I dared the cinnamon challenge or something like that, right? You can't say that. He said, I dared to do. Right? So in German, wagen etwas zu tun, wagen etwas zu tun, wagen etwas zu tun, is to dare to do something, just like in English. So it's using a, a consistent grammar pattern. But you can also etwas wagen, which implies to do. Right? So without another verb, we can assume it's to do or to make or something like that. Otherwise, we can provide a verb by saying wagen etwas zu, blah, blah, blah. Wagen etwas zu essen, right? To dare to eat something, right? Nur einmal vor, so only once years ago had Lutz, so, so he knows, wohlwissend, that this guy would always be getting upset over how freely uh, Berlach smoked his cigars. But only once years ago had Lutz dared to comment, to make a comment, okay? So we can see that Berlach has some pull here. He's not just totally subordinate to this guy. Hey, subordinate, that word came back. I remember it now. <laughs> so, no einmal vor Jahren hat er eine Bemerkung gewagt. Aber mit einer verächtlichen Hand, mit einer verächtlichen Handbewegung hat er Berlach geantwortet. Okay. Er sei unter anderem zehn Jahre in türkischen Diensten gestanden und habe immer in den Zimmern seiner Vorgesetzten in Konstantinopel geraucht. Eine Bemerkung, die umso gewichtiger war, 
as sie nie nachgeprüft werden konnte. <laughs> so this is a pretty funny one. So hopefully, hopefully you'll find this funny. If you understood it right away, maybe you'll find it funny right away. Otherwise, we'll translate and we'll see what you think. Um, I think it's a pretty funny thing. Right, so, but with a verächtlich, verächtlich, mit einer verächtlichen Handbewegung, a dismissive, right? So you think of this, fair is like um, doing something like to the end state or like usually has to do with like removing or annihilating. So the way I remember this, verächtlich is like annihilating action, right? <laughs> An annihilating action would be like a dismissive action. That's not what this literally means really, but that's sort of how I remember it, verächtlich. Eine Handbewegung, Hand, just a compound word. Eine Bewegung, this comes from sich bewegen, to move. All right, so eine Handbewegung is a hand movement, a hand motion, motion of the hand. That's what I'm doing this whole time. Mit einer verächtlichen Handbewegung, with a dismissive hand gesture, had Berlach answered. So he answered with one dismissive hand gesture that, right, so in this case there's no das, so we're not putting the, the, the verb at the end, okay? And thank goodness because we know this is a kind of a long sentence, so. So, geantwortet, Kama, er sei unter anderem, he sei, again, konjunktiv zwei, so this is reporting the conversation. Right? This conversation is not happening, but it's being reported. Right? So like quoting, kind of, in the context of the story. Er sei unter anderem zehn Jahre in türkischen, Dienst, türkischen Diensten gestanden. So he was, among other things, ten years in Turkish service uh, in a position. So he, had, he was... In a position, or he, he had a, a position in the Turkish police service, among other things, for 10 years. Und habe, so again, this is not like ich habe, this is er habe. Er habe immer noch Konjunktiv 2, okay? Und habe immer in den Zimmern seiner Vorgesetzten in Konstantinopel geraucht, right? And had always smoked in the rooms of his superiors in Constantinople, in Constantinople. Okay, so he did this. So this is a comma. So this is starting a, a new thought here, right? And when we do the whole English translation, it'll be clear how this is constructed, hopefully, if it's not already. So, habe immer in den Zimmern seiner Vorgesetzten in Constantinople geraucht, eine Bemerkung, die umso gewichtiger war, als sie nie nachgeprüft werden konnte. Als sie nie nachgeprüft werden konnte. Okay. So, a comment that was umso, sometimes this is written as one word, umso, but not always, die umso gewicht, so the thing of this is one concept, and it can't even be written as one word. Although Germans like to do that a lot. They like to do that a lot if there's a, um, a phrase that's sort of like two or three words always stuck together, sometimes it's usually an accepted alternate style to put them as one word. The um, so all the more. This means all the more. So a comment that was all the more weighty, right? Weighty, right? And they have Gewicht means weight. Gewicht means weight. So gewichtig is weighty. And this is the comparative gewichtiger. Gewichtiger, uh, which is weightier. So a comment that's all that was all the more weighty, weighty. So all the more uh, important or, or well, uh, well, um, well constructed, maybe you might say, or well chosen. Als sie nie nachgeprüft werden konnte. So an, a, so really, it's basically saying uh, so since it could never be verified, right? Nachprüfen is to verify something. So prüfen is to check something. Nachprüfen is to check something with the intent of getting information. So nach, if it's not talking about motion, if it's talking about information, so any sort of verb would have to do with information or discovering something or looking for something. If you put nach in front of it, it means you're doing it with the intention of discovering, the intention of reaching a conclusion or a discovery. All right, so that's... Um, it's an important pattern to know. I think off the top of my head, I can think of three verbs that do it, but I think there's got to be way more. So for instance, all right, so there's suchen, to look for, to search, and then also nachsuchen. Can 
die nachsuchen, is to um, look at, is to search after something. So it's not just searching, it's to search after, like you're going after something, trying to find it specifically, right? So it's a kind of a subtle difference, right? Because if you said suchen, when a native German might prefer to say nachsuchen, no one's not, no one's going to misunderstand that, basically. But it's, but it can be, you sound better if you pick a more direct or more exact verb. So, in forschen is to research. Nachforschen is like to drill down really deep or take a deep dive into something. Um, this is sort of like investigate, right? Really to investigate or to, to drill down and, and look for something. And then prüfen is to check. Like, check if something's okay, check if something is up to standard. Nachprüfen, so to check with the intent of finding something, is to verify, okay? So that's a pattern. Okay. So this whole thing is... But so so but Berlach answered with a dismissive hand gesture, saying um, he had been, among other places, uh, in Turkish service, in this in the Turkish police service, and had always smoked in the rooms of his superiors in Constantinople. A comment all the more weighty, or all the more significant, or all the more well chosen. Uh, as it could never be verified. It could, could never become, is able to be verified, okay? <laughs> Dr. Lutz, so let's read from here. So this is going to go, this whole paragraph, right here. Dr. Lucius Lutz empfing Berlach nervös, da seiner Meinung nach noch nichts unternommen worden war und wies ihm einen bequemen Sessel in der Nähe seines Schreibtisches an. Okay, seines, seines Schreibtisches an. Okay. Dr. Lucius Lutz empfing, this is empfangen, to welcome someone, to, to receive someone, to receive someone, welcome them. Empfing Berlach nervös, he, he welcomed him nervously. Okay. Why? Da seiner Meinung nach, because in his opinion, noch nichts unternommen worden war. Right. So nervous, so in this case, actually, I mistranslated this a little bit. Nervös can mean nervous, but uh, in German, nervös has two meanings. Nervös doesn't only mean nervous, but it can mean annoyed, right? He's, he's like, think of the connection in English, nervous, having nerves, but also um, to get on someone's nerves. So nerve in English still has this connection of, okay, um, it's, it's nervous or it's annoying. In German, it's just, just one word, nervös. So er empfing Berlach nervös, right? He, he, not nervous, but annoyed, or sort of worked up. We can say he's, if you say he's worked up, you cover both, uh, both uh, options, actually. So that's a trick you can use. Um, but really, we should, we should understand what's the best translation. In this case, da seiner Meinung nach noch nichts unternommen worden war. Okay, this is geworden, but that happens when you put two uh, past participles together and one of them is geworden, it loses the ge in front of it. That's... Um, Something you may have seen. So this is, don't worry about this. If you don't know about this, look this up. Look up geworden and worden. They're the same past participle of werden, but this is used when you're using the passive voice in the past tense, and you've got another verb right in front of it. So because in his opinion, unternehmen, so unternommen is the simple past of unternehmen, to undertake, right, to undertake. So in he was annoyed because in his opinion, Nothing yet had been undertaken, right? So, etwas unternehmen is, means to undertake in German, but they use it pretty frequently, not as much as we would in English, because unternehmen, to, to undertake something, is kind of a serious language. It's not very casual, and it has a certain um, elevated language in it. But in German, etwas unternehmen is just like to get going with something, to get doing something. So, be, so he was annoyed when he welcomed Berlach because, in his opinion, nothing had really gotten done yet. Wies ihm einen bequemen Sessel in der Nähe seines Schreibtisches an. Okay, anweisen, anweisen. 
Okay, this is to confer or assign to somebody. So he sort of like pointed hit, pointed out to him and like, here's your seat, take this seat. Sort of ordering him a little bit. Or sort of conferring to him, giving to him. Und wies ihm einen bequemen Sessel in der Nähe seines Schreibtisches an. A comfortable seat or a cushion. or a, Yeah, like a, a seat with a cushion, basically. Um, in der Nähe seines Schreibtisches an. In near, in the nearness. If you haven't heard this before, probably you have if you've if you're understanding this, uh, if you're sort of at the right level for this video, you probably heard this. In the nearness just means near to. It's another way to say near. In der Nähe seines Schreibtisches, near his writing desk, near his desk. Okay, so he he welcomes him annoyed, thinking in his opinion that nothing quite had yet been done, and he pointed him out his seat, a comfortable chair near his desk. Okay. Noch nichts aus Biel, fragte Berdach. Nothing yet out of Biel, so nothing yet from Biel, asked question, or kept questioned Berdach. Noch nichts, antwortete Lutz. Nothing yet, answered Lutz. Merkwürdig, sagte Berlach. Dabei, dabei arbeiten die doch wie wild. Right? Merkwürdig, sagte Berlach. Dabei arbeiten die doch wie wild. Right? So strange or weird. Strange, weird, said Berlach. Dabei arbeiten die doch wie wild. So doch, again, this is being the contradictor. It's contradicting the noch nichts. So he's saying all this. So all this, what he's saying, besides the doch, should be in service of, you should understand it to contradict nothing yet. So nothing yet. So but, die Arbeiten. So here's that impersonal, or I really got to figure out the right name for stuff before I start saying it. <laughs> so the, 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 the der, die, das, referring to people, right? The, the der, die, das to mean him. So die, in this case, doesn't mean, remember, die is not just feminine. It's, it's plural. We should... Definitely know that. So, die Arbeiten. So, die Arbeiten is like those guys. That lot, right? Die Arbeiten. So, this is not the works or something weird like that. Die Arbeiten wie wild. Those guys, that lot, are working like crazy, like wild. Right? So, he says, so nothing yet from Biel. Nothing yet. Strange. The guys over there are working like crazy. So, doch, to contradict the noch nichts. And yeah, wie wild, as wild. Wie wild is how the Germans say, as like crazy. Berlach setzte sich und sah flüchtig nach den Trafelé-Bildern, die, die an den Winden hingen, farbige Federzeichnungen, auf denen bald mit und bald ohne General unter einer großen, flatternden... Next page... Unter einen großen, flatternden Fahne Soldaten entweder von links nach rechts oder von rechts nach links marschierten. Okay. Another long one. So just to give you some visual here. It goes from here to there. Okay. So Berlach setzte sich, sat himself. So he sat down. Und sah flüchtig. Remember this one from the, this was one I pointed out specifically in chapter one. So this means fleetingly. Er sah flüchtig nach den Trafelé-Bildern. Trafelé, this is just a, I had to look this up, because I'm like, who the heck is this? It's a uh, Swiss artist. So Trafelé-Bildern, makes sense. Trafelé, drawings or paintings. Images, but when we, it's an artist, we know we would call them drawings or paintings. Die an den Winden hingen, that hung on the walls. Farbige Federzeichnungen. Okay, farbig, fa, eine Farbe, right? Is a color, so farbig is colorful. Also, die sind, also, ja, sie sind farbige Federzeichnungen. Feder, Zeichnung. Eine Zeichnung comes from zeichnen, which means to draw. Feder is a feather. So, eine Zeichnung mit Feder is a feather drawing. Okay, so what the heck is a feather drawing? Did he actually paint these with feathers? What's going on? No, no, this goes back to. Uh, quills, using quills as pens, so sort of an, uh, maybe perhaps a word of older origin. So if I was if I was recording this video with my with my phone in the 1800s, right, my 1800s phone that you have to hand crank, I would be <laughs> I would be using ein Fida, right? But 
Feather, so feather zeichnungen are not feather drawings, but rather pen and ink drawings. Okay, pen and ink. So drawn with a pen. So farbige, so they're colorful though. Farbige feather zeichnungen auf denen bald mit und bald ohne. So upon which, upon which, bald mit und bald ohne. Okay, so this is weird. Not weird, but I mean, I hadn't seen this expression before, honestly. I could tell immediately what it meant from context, but this is just an expression that uh, you probably would not say. Again, native Germans, if you're watching, please tell me I'm, I'm a big doofus if I'm wrong, but it's something you probably wouldn't say in regular speech, talking casually. This is more of a, a, a writing only, a book expression. But bald, X, so let's, uh, let's write here. Bald X und bald Y means sometimes X and sometimes Y, right? Literally, I mean, it's gibberish if you pr translate it literally. Soon X and soon Y. Um, I mean, maybe you can think of a way to sort of understand it as soon, soon. But so, so, so sometimes X and sometimes Y or like here X and there Y, right? So it's sort of a comparison or a back and forth or a here and there. Ohne General, so bald mit und bald ohne General. So some with and some without a general. Okay. So who's doing this? So this is going to be a, a, pass, a Passivsatz, I believe. Oh no, it's not. This is just taking a long time to get to the actual subject of the sentence. So upon which some with and some without generals unter einer großen flatternden Fahne. So eine Fahne is a flag or a banner. Flattern, this is again using the present progressive as a adverb. Flattern, flatternd. Well, actually, this is being used as an adjective, sorry. Um, flattern is to flutter. That's exactly what it sounds like, so it's easy to remember. So f big fluttering banners. Who is doing this? Soldaten, okay. Entweder von links nach rechts oder von rechts nach links marschierten. So this, all this description, I'll translate it into English now, sort of fully. Berlach sat and looked briefly towards the Trafalé paintings that hung on the walls. Colorful pen and ink drawings upon which soldiers, some with, some without generals, marched. So you got to really twist yourself into a pretzel to translate this. Marched from left to right or from right to left under a big fluttering flag all right and so he's really so do this bald mit und bald ohne und then von links nach rechts und rechts nach links you should be getting sort of a picture of a lot of chaos like crisscrossing all over the place columns of soldiers okay so da, 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 da. sentence boundary right here so look right here. Es ist, begann Lutz, wieder einmal mit einer immer neuen, steigenden Angst zu sehen, wie sehr die Kriminalistik in diesem Land noch in den Kinderschuhen steckt. Okay. Okay. As it is, began Lutz, even if you don't, literally, if you don't speak German, you could probably guess what this means. That's the fun part. Sometimes you get bits like that. Es ist, begann Lutz, Wieder einmal mit einer immer neuen, steigenden Angst. So once again, wieder einmal, with an ever new, rising fear. Okay? With an, with a, yeah, with an always new, so he's always surprised by this, basically. He's saying, I'll never stop being surprised with rising fear to see how much the Kriminalistik, criminology, criminal justice, in diesem Lande, just Land, right? Data V. In diesem Lande noch in den Kinderschuhen steckt. So in etwas, Dativ, stecken means to be stuck in something. Okay? And this is. Dativ, stecken. If you say in etwas, with a dative object, stecken means to be stuck in something, right? Im Stau stecken, right, means to be stuck in a, a mire or more or in, a, or in a traffic jam, really. Im Stau stecken, so to be, so ein Stau is literally a jam. 
So im Stau stecken is to be in like in a traffic jam. So you can stecken in anything you want. And in this case, what are we stuck in? In den Kinderschuhen. 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 Child shoes. Should be, that's a pretty easy compound right there. So, so it's still in stuck in child's shoes, right? So what does that mean? It's immature, right? So that's a good way in German to say it's immature, right? Du steckst in Kinderschuhen, right? You haven't grown up. Grow up, dude. Du steckst in Kinderschuhen. Alter. Okay. Wie seid ihr so? So he's shocked and shocked and horrified about these. Again, uh, we described it in the last chapter is uh, der vorweltliche, vorweltliche Stand, der vorweltliche Stand der Kriminalistik in Bern. Okay, the prehistoric state. And in this case, he's saying it's it's immature. It hasn't grown up. Okay. So next sentence is going to be from here all the way to the end here. So look here. Ich bin, weiß Gott, an vieles im Kanton gewöhnt, aber das Verfahren, wie man es hier einem toten Polizeileutnant gegenüber offenbar für natürlich ansieht, wirft ein so schreckliches Licht auf die berufliche Fähigkeit unserer Dorfpolizei, dass ich noch jetzt erschüttert bin. Okay. I am, God knows, right? weiß Gott, God knows, I am, God knows, an vieles im Kanton gewöhnt. Im Kanton... For a second, I thought this was a word I didn't know. Cant Canton? What is that? It's a region in Switzerland. So, Most of the things, thankfully, I don't know are about Switzerland. So if you're from Switzerland, I'm sorry. To me, you basically don't exist. No. <laughs> Your country, I know nothing about the geography of Switzerland. So, Ich bin, weiß Gott, an vielsem Kanton gewöhnt. Aber das Verfahren, so I'm, I'm used to a lot in, in Kanton, in the Kanton area. So in this place, Kanton, where... I believe they are. This is probably, hopefully, the state or the region where Bern is situated. Otherwise, this is probably a reference that I don't understand. So, uh, homework. If this is a reference I don't understand, please tell me so I can learn something. Okay. So, he's used to a lot. I'm used to a lot. God knows. Aber das Verfahren, wie man es hier einem toten Polizeileutnant gegenüber offenbar für natürlich ansieht, wirft so ein schreckliches Licht auf die berufliche Fähigkeit unserer Dorfpolizei. Das ist noch jetzt, dass ich noch, noch jetzt erschüttert bin. Okay. But the process, das Verfahren, the handling or the process, wie man es hier einem toten Polizeileutnant gegenüber, okay, as one here, einem toten Polizeileutnant gegenüber. So this is a, um, this is nachgestellt, right? So it's, it's placed after something. Gegenüber means with relation to. So you may have heard gegenüber to mean next door to, or like uh, talking about, um, yeah, sort of next door or across from, directly adjacent. But when you say it um, in post, in a post position from the thing you're referencing, so gegenüber is actually causing this whole thing here to be dativ. This is all dativ because of gegenüber, and it means with regards to or regarding, okay, regarding the matter. So regarding the matter of a dead police lieutenant. All right, it makes sense. Good. Offenbar für natürlich ansieht. All right, so as people, so the 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 process whereby people here uh, openly ansehen, ansehen, openly see für natürlich. Can, so in this case, ansehen, so it means to look at or to look or see something. But in this case, it means to um, to consider as, right? Etwas für etwas ansehen, right? To see it as, or you, I think you can also say als, etwas als etwas ansehen, right? To see it as, to see it for. Okay, so how people here, the ways in which people here uh, consider, openly consider the matter of a dead police lieutenant normal, Okay, so again, we have to twist ourselves into a pretzel to word it properly in English. Um, so you probably can't do this live, right, for a lot of these sentences. Don't worry if I can do it. It's because I've been doing this for a while, and also I got a chance to read it through it just once beforehand, so it helps me a little bit. So so all that, I won't try to repeat it because it's already there. It's, it's in the video. So this all stuff, what does it do? Es wirft ein so schreckliches Licht auf die berufliche Fähigkeit unserer Dorfpolizei. 
it throws a so terrible light, throws so terrible a light onto the professional, so berufliche, easy to remember because uh, beruf, der beruf, means a career or a job. You can think of it too as ruf means to call something, to call out to someone, or like anrufen, to call the telephone. So your what's your calling in life? Der Beruf. Maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't, but in any case, or just memorize it, der Beruf. So beruflich, relating to a career or job or profession. So die berufliche Fähigkeit, the professional capacity or capability. Fähigkeit is an ability. The, the professional abilities of our village police force. Die Dorfpolizei. Unsere Dorfpolizei. Genitiv. So the fact, so, I am, God knows, used to so many things in Canton. But the way that people here seem to consider the death of a police lieutenant as natural throws a most terrible light on the professional capabilities of our village police force. Such that, dass ich noch jetzt erschüttert bin, that I am shaken. Right? I'm shaken by this. Okay, dass ich noch jetzt, that I'm yet now shaken. All right, in Berlach, you can imagine the hard-boiled detective who drinks too much and has to hand in his badge every week because he broke protocol. This is probably Berlach. Beruhigen Sie sich, Dr. Lutz, antwortete Berlach. Unsere Dorfpolizei ist ihrer Aufgabe sicher ebenso sehr gewachsen wie die Polizei von Chicago. Und wir werden schon noch herausfinden, wer den Schmied getötet hat. Okay. Calm yourself, Dr. Lutz answered Berlach. Calm yourself. Unsere Dorfpolizei ist ihrer Aufgabe sicher ebenso sehr gewachsen wie die Polizei. Okay. So ebenso, you can think of it kind of as a contraction. So our village police force is to their... To their, so, auf, to their task, Aufgabe, surely, ebenso, such on the level, such on the level, so on a level such as, so much, okay, so on the same level is what we're saying, and this will become clear when we look at the rest, sich ja ebenso sehr gewachsen, gewachsen, sort of uh, is, is risen up, or up to the task, basically. Um, skilled or up to the task is as much so up to the task as the police from Chicago. Right? Because he knows this guy's constantly complaining that Bern is not as hard boiled as Chicago. Um, you're probably not getting, you know, shot with uh, Thompson machine guns out of the backs of cars from the mob, but sometimes Polizei Lieutenant gets killed. <laughs> so, but anyway. He's erschüttert because of this. But Berlach saying, calm down, Dr. Lutz. Our village police force is surely just as capable of their task, of their duty as the police in Chicago. Und wir werden schon noch herausfinden. We will definitely yet find out. Herausfinden. We'll definitely yet find out, wer den Schmied getötet hat. Who killed Schmied, right? So this is interesting. This is der Schmied, in this case, Akkusativ, so den Schmied. So when you talk about somebody, you can refer to them as der oder die, depending on masculine or feminine. It's got a definitely different feeling to it than if he just said, wer Schmied getötet hat, right? Um, it's sort of, it's again, it's sort of making it like that guy or this this guy, right? But it's a little more friendly, interestingly enough, than just saying... Uh, wer, so if he'd said, wer den getötet hat, right, if, he, if you cover up Schmidt, and imagine he said, wer den getötet hat, it would have been, it would have sounded really dismissive, like he doesn't give a crap, he's like, we'll find out who killed that dude, we'll find out who killed that guy, that's alright, but den Schmidt is more like, the fellow Schmidt, right, this fellow Schmidt, this, so it's a, adding a little bit of familiarity, actually, if you use der die with the actual person's name, okay, um, so you would say that, you can say that about someone usually that if you're close to them or you know them well, or you, you're adding a little bit of whimsy to the way you're talking about them. You wouldn't put that through here because it's a little serious and Berlach is clearly pretty serious, but uh, that's sort of what it means. Okay. Continue on. So, wer den Schmied getötet hat? Haben Sie irgendwie den Verdacht, Kommissar Berlach? Right? 
irgendwer, some, 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 yeah, someone, I don't know why it took me so long to get that word out, haben sie irgendwas wen, because this is accusative, haben sie irgendwen im Verdacht, Verdacht, der Verdacht, suspicion, all right, der Verdacht is suspicion, so im Verdacht haben is to have in suspicion, so have you some, do you suspect someone? Right? Do you have someone in mind? Do you have? Are you suspicious of someone? Do you have someone? Have, are you so? Yeah. Are you? Do you suspect someone? Right. Suspect someone. The best. A good translation of that is, uh, you, uh, im Verdacht haben. Right. To have someone in suspicion. And Berlach sah Lutz lange an. Okay. He saw. He stared at Lutz for a long time. And so remember, this is ansehen again. Okay. Za an ansehen. And then this is ansieht, but this is, so we can see, two different usage, usages of ansehen. To consider as and to look at, all right? Two different uses. You know because ansehen will go with für or oder als, right? Ansehen, but, you, but ansehen takes something directly, right? So in this case, er sah Lutz lange an. If he said something like, er sah für, er sah Lutz für, Lange an, so that would be funny, right? If he said, er sah Lutz für, in this case, lange is kind of, wouldn't kind of work, but er sah Lutz für lang an, or something like that, it would be like, he considered Lutz long, right? So we don't want to say für or als, we know jemanden ansehen is to look at somebody. In this case, lange, the adjective form of lang, specifically meaning a long time, sorry, adverb form. The adverb form when lang means long time becomes lange, just something you have to memorize. There's probably a rule or an, expla an explanation for this, but I just, I mean, eventually you just know it. So Berlach sah Lutz lange an. He stared at him for a while, looked at him, and sagte endlich, Ja, ich habe irgendwie den Verdacht, Dr. Lutz. And said finally, Yes, I do have someone. I do suspect someone, Dr. Lutz. Wen den? Wen den? Right? Who then? Well, let's find out. Wer, wen? Berlach im Verdacht hat. Das kann ich Ihnen noch nicht sagen. Oh, boo, boo. I can't tell you that yet. I can't tell that to you yet. Nun, das ist ja interessant, sagte Lutz. Ich weiß, dass Sie immer bereit sind, Kommissar Berlach, einen Fehlgriff gegen die großen Erkenntnisse der modernen wissenschaftlichen Kriminalistik zu beschönigen. Okay. Long one, so knock off the word boundary there. That, oh, this is, you know, this is kind of one. If I, so we'll, we're bunch, so we know this. That is quite interesting, said Lutz. Now that, it, nun, when you say nun, it's sort of a sentence filler or like a transition word. It means now in the sense of just like, just like a transition or a filler. Like in English we say, now that's what I call chicken. I don't know, I don't know why I came up with that sentence, but, but now is like nun. The now doesn't really mean anything. It's just sort of intensifying. Nun, das ist ja interessant. So, ja, being used as a modal particle, a modal particle, to intensify interessant. So, it's, that's quite interesting. Now, that is quite interesting, said Lutz. I know that you are always ready. Das sind immer bereit, sind Kommissar Berlach. Einen Fehlgriff, einen Fehlgriff, okay, Fehlgriff. So, Griff is a grab or a reach. Fehl, when you put it, so it comes from like fehlen or fehler. If you know about fehler, it means a mistake or error. Fehlen is to miss, right? So ein Fehlgriff is a, it's like, sort of like a grab or reach that misses the mark. So that would be a miss, uh, miscalculation or a mistake or an error, right? Um, a screw up, right? A misstep, really. Uh, but you can also say Fehlschritt, right? Literally misstep. So if you think of Fehl, when it goes in front of a word as sort of miss, miss, speak, whatever. Well, actually, that doesn't work because when you're talking about doing something incorrectly in a verb sense, you usually use Fehr, not Fehl. But anyway. So I know you're always ready, Kommissar Werdach, einen Fehlgriff gegen die großen Erkenntnisse, a, mis a misstep against the great knowledge or knowings, knowledge, of modern of the modern scientific criminology zu beschönigen so schön schön is we know what that means beschönigen however does mean um to sugarcoat something to make it look 
overlay nice, to gloss over something, right? I know, como se verdad, that you're always ready to gloss over any failures in or any um, any la any uh, missing or or lacking points in the great knowledge of modern scientific criminology. Okay. Vergessen Sie jedoch nicht, so it's a bit of a longer one, so we'll border from here to here. Vergessen Sie jedoch nicht, however, don't forget, however, don't forget that die Zeit fortschreitet, right? The time is advancing, right? Schreiten, we learned last time, is to step. Fortschreiten is to like step lively, step in making progress or step ahead at a good clip, a good pace. So time is advancing quickly. Time is running out. Und auch vor dem berühmtesten Kriminalisten nicht halt macht. For something. This is just one thing you kind of have to... You can actually come up with a... Um, well, so for etwas halt machen would be to halt, to make halt. I'm going to put that comment on for in the bank. We'll address that some other day. <laughs> um, for etwas halt machen, to make stop would be to come to a stop or to like come to a dead stop really before something right before in the sense of in front of right in german they use for as in before like we used to do in english which isn't so common anymore to say before time but also before in space for than in front of so also even in this case it means even oh not also but even and even and does not even stop for the most famous investigator. Okay? It doesn't even stop for the most famous investigator. So he's saying time is of the essence, right? Time will not stop. Time is moving apace and will not stop even for the most famous investigator. He's going to say here, sentence boundary is right here. Ich habe in New York und Chicago Verbrechen gesehen, von denen Sie in unserem lieben Bernd doch wohl nicht die richtige Vorstellung, ha Vorstellung haben. Okay. I have, in New York and Chicago, Verbrechen, Offenses or Crimes. Um, ich habe in, in New York und Chicago Verbrechen gesehen. I've seen Crimes in New York and Chicago, von denen sie in unserem lieben Bern doch wohl nicht die richtige Vorstellung haben. From which you, in our beloved Bern, doch, another use of doch, I like to point out most of the uses of doch because uh, it took a long time for me to fully grasp it, how it's properly used. Um, and eventually, just through sheer attrition, I sort of built up a feel for it, but now I want to explain it so people don't have to go through that. Maybe it's impossible. Aber doch, ich kann das euch erklären. So, um, von denen sie in unserem lieben Bern doch wohl nicht die richtige Vorstellung haben. So doch, in this case, he's contradicting, so he's, he's assuming, so let's, let's kind of uh, translate this without doch, of which you in our beloved Ben, indeed, not the, um, not the proper imagining have. So what does this mean? Not the proper, not the, the right imagining, not the right idea, right? So no proper idea. So, in New York and Chicago, I've seen crimes that you could not even imagine in our beloved Bern, all right? So, doch doesn't necessarily need to be there. I'll say it sounds much better with it. But doch there is sort of pre-contradicting. He's assuming Berlach is taking this lightly, and he would say, like, come on, New York and Chicago are not so hardcore. Stop this. But he says doch to sort of preempt so he's sort of preemptively nipping that in the bud he's saying no matter what you think i contradict you when i say this doch wohl nicht so you most so in tr english translating that you would just add some more certainty to it or some more forcefulness you most certainly have not the slightest idea right of the kinds of crimes that i've seen in new york and chicago that would be unthinkable and our most beloved bad so Da, 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 da. Long sentence again. Nun ist aber ein Polizeileutnant ermordet worden. Das sichere Anzeichen, dass es, hier, dass es auch hier im Gebäude der öffentlichen Sicherheit zu krachen beginnt. Und da heißt es rücks, rücksichtlos eingreifen. Okay? 
rücksichtlos eingreifen. Now, this is other as a modal particular, well, you can kind of mean but, so, but now, so, but now, a police lieutenant has been murdered. Das sichere Anzeichen, Anzeichen, so Anzeichen, as a verb, means to display. Ein Anzeichen, taking it as a noun, means a display or a signal or a sign of something. So the, the sure sign that is auch hier im Gebäude der öffentlichen Sicherheit zu krachen beginnt. Right? So don't get hung up on this. Zu krachen beginnt. Beginnen etwas zu tun. To begin to do something. What is it beginning to do? Krachen. Es beginnt zu krachen. Which means exactly what it sounds like. If you had someone who didn't speak German guess what that means, they would probably guess, right? It means to to crack apart, to break apart. So if you say in English, like, oh, things are starting to fall apart. Es, es beginnt zu krachen, right? You might say that. Um, so now, but now a police lieutenant's been murdered. The sure sign that even here, im Gebäude der öffentlichen Sicherheit, so im Gebäude, in the building of public safety, okay? So what's, is, is, uh, so here's my question. This I'm not sure of. Does this refer to like a public safety building? Is this like an official name of a building? Or is this being metaphorical? I'll be 100% honest, I'm not sure. So he's saying in the building of open safety or public safety, it's beginning to break down. It's beginning to crack up. Und da, so, so it's a sure sign that, so does he mean im Gebäude? So is this like in the, in the cradle of public safety, in a place where the public feels safe, this place, Bern, things are beginning to fall apart? Or does he literally mean in this building? Because they're presumably in police offices, right? Where, indeed, the this guy Schmidt worked. So, in the office, in the building of public safety, or is it metaphorical? I don't know. Give me your opinion. Especially if you're a German. I would love to learn something again. So, hey, you know, I get to learn stuff with this too, right? Mostly Swiss geography so far, but, you know, I learned that bald export, bald y thing. Um, der öffentlichen Sicherheit zu kranken geht und da heißt es rücksichtslos eingreifen. And so heißt, this is interesting. Interesting, interesting. The first thing we learn in German class or in a German textbook, ich heiße your name here, right? My name is. And it means I'm called, right? But heißen, am I going to write? Well, we'll see if I write something on this. Uh, we'll move this away so you can actually read this until I decide that if I definitely want to write something or not. Uh, heißen can also mean to to mean, okay? Was heißt das? Does, means what is it called and what does it mean? Wie heißt das? Only means what is it called, okay? Was heißt das? What does that mean, right? And so was heißt das? means can mean like it's basically like was bedeutet das right basically the same thing was heißt das to me sort of has more of a feel like um uh, asking about uh, the results of something so if you know like the oh the economy has grown you know we've grown three percent gdp in the last quarter and so also, was heißt das so what does that exactly mean right not it could mean not what does it literally mean that the GDP grew 3% or whatever. Or it could mean what are the results coming from that? What will that mean? What, will, what meaning will that have? Give us high stuff. So in this case, so this is being used sort of as an expression. So when you say as heist, blah, 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 usually with a verb or something. So I'm going to write it now. Yay. As heist, all right. This is an expression. I wrote it without the S tit. Because that's how I learned it the first time I saw it, and I'm stubborn. I think this might be more common, but you know, I've purposely not learned just because I want to write it without the estet. <laughs> also, as highest, usually verb or something. So, so if we set it with a noun, it would be it's called or it means blank, right? All right, as highest eine Tierart or something like that. Es heißt eine Art Tier, right? That means it's a kind of animal. Um, but as high as blank means the solution is or what must happen is, okay? As high as, right? And as, um, so for instance, let's see, um, what's a good example? 
Uh, es heißt, den Schlaf dringend nachholen. Right? Es heißt, den Schlaf dringend nachholen. So, which would mean, the, the idea or the solution is, what needs to be done is, you urgently need to catch up on your sleep. Right? <laughs> All right, so that's something maybe you have heard before. I've certainly heard it. Um, so the solution is, or what needs to be done is. So, getting back to this. Und da heißt es, so for that reason, the thing needs to be done is, rücksichtlos, without looking back. Rücksicht, so rück is in zurück, means back, or der Rücken, the back, someone's physical back, sight. Back sight, without back sight. Right? So it's very nice and literal in German, as many things are. Without back sight, without looking back. Eingreifen, to dive in or grab into something. So eingreifen in this case would mean to forge ahead or to to act, um, to, you know, uh, to 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 reach into it, to go into it. Okay. So this whole thing. Nun ist aber ein Polizeileutnant ermordet worden. Das sichere Anzeichen, dass es hier auch im Gebäude der öffentlichen Sicherheit zu krachen beginnt. Und da heißt es rücksichtslos eingreifen. Okay. So, so, however, now, a police lieutenant's been murdered. A sure sign that even here, in the Office of Public Safety, or in the auspices of public safety, maybe you'll say, it's things are beginning to break down. And that means we must forge ahead without delay. Right? That's how I might translate it just spontaneously. So this is going to be a, this is going to be a fun bit. Gewiss, das tue ja, das tue ja auch, antwortete Berlach. Gewiss, das tue ja auch. Dann sei es ja gut, entgegnete Lutz und hustete. Okay, so this thing is going to take a second to explain. I know it's it's a long video, but it's going to take. A, I'm going to pass spend some time on this because it's interesting, and you will learn something, perhaps. Well, almost certainly you'll learn something, but. Whether it's interesting is the question. It's also, so, gewiss, das tue ja auch. Gewiss, so we're not going to pay attention to this. We're just going to learn what it means. Gewiss means certainly. So it's like sicher, right? It means most certainly or, or knowingly. I know. Most certainly. Das tue ja auch, antwortete Berlach. So this guy just said, listen, things are falling apart. We got a police officer murdered. We gotta, we gotta tackle this thing. We gotta get in, in get into this thing. And Berlach says, "Gewiss, das tue ja auch." So who the hell are you talking about? Er? Yeah? Who? And he uses the konjunktiv zwei. And notice Lutz in his response also says, with konjunktiv zwei. Now, I'm sure you've been aware that uh, you've been made aware that konjunktiv zwei is not usually used in speaking, right? It might be used in like a newscast or something where it's, you know, a little more appropriate. But why are these guys using Konjunktiv 2 talking to each other? And what, who's er, said Berlach. Well, so remember Konjunktiv 2 refers entirely to, I hope this is actually, I hope it's not Konjunktiv 1 and I've been calling it the wrong thing this whole time, but I just had a moment of deep self-doubt and dread, so. If it if I've been wrong, oops, I'm not re-recording the video. My mistakes will live forever. Um, I've, I've given myself into my fate, right? Um, ich hab, <laughs> ich hab mir in das Schicksal gefügt. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So he's, so think of it as, um, I've heard, right? When, you, when somebody says it, think of it as I've heard, or supposedly. So that supposedly he's doing that supposedly too so who is he the secret is the magic of sarcasm okay let me look at this and then i'm going to give you my translation okay the way to translate this this is like some deep sarcasm they're sniping at each other in these bits here and to understand what it means and what it what the conjunctif is doing here uh is that uh it's going to require an english translation that sort of completely ignores the literal meaning of these sentences so, dann sei es ja gut. So, Berlach answered after the guy explained, we need to actually investigate this. This is a serious deal. Certainly. I heard he's doing that too. Answered Berlach. Then, I've heard it's quite good. Countered Lutz and huffed. 
okay? So what in the world does this mean? I'm going to give you a translation that I thought up as I was reading it, um, sort of to give you the feel of what this is. It's not saying this directly. I just told you what it means directly, and it's very hard to translate directly into English. Here's my translation of this into sort of colloquial natural English, and you'll get the idea. So to set the scene, remember, this guy just said, we have a dead police officer. Someone needs to do something about this. Imagine Berlach answers, indeed. In fact, I heard they put a great investigator on the case. And Lutz says, well, I'd like to meet him. Okay, so do you get what's happening there in English? So Berlach is sort of saying like, you jerk. I'm the one investigating this and you're telling me how important this is and that we need to do something. I'm the something. I'm doing it, right? And so he's saying, I heard they put a great investigator on the case, sort of sarcastically. Like, well, well, you know, if, if we need an I actually heard they put someone on it. It's me, right? And Lutz says, well, a great investigator? I'd like to meet him, right? He answers sarcastically as well, saying, I see no great investigator, right? And again, they're not saying this literally in the German, but this is sort of the feeling of what they're saying. I don't see a great investigator in front of me, so I would love to meet this guy, whoever he is. Right? So if you imagine that sarcasm and that sort of sniping, that's what's going on here. Okay? Interesting moment. This is the magic of translation. You get to do stuff like this. Um, so yeah, Konjunktiv 2 here is being used to, to as like sarcasm because he's saying it's reported information, then he counters with, oh, it's reported information. So, literally, certainly, and I've heard he's doing it too. Who's he? We know in this case he's sort of sarcastically referring to himself. Then I've heard it's quite good. Then I've heard that's, that's, that's good. Then, then, in that case, maybe that's, that's good, said Lutz, and huffed. Right? So after that tense, sarcastic exchange, an der Wand tickte eine Uhr. Okay, so there's a silence. They fall into silence in the... On the wall, a clock ticked away. It ticked. Okay, let me adjust my paper. Berlach legte seine linke Hand sorgfältig auf den Magen und drückte mit der rechten die Zigarre im Aschenbecker aus. We're going to pause there because it goes off the page and this is enough already to interpret. Berlach legte seine linke Hand sorgfältig auf den Magen. What did he do? He lay his left hand carefully onto den Magen, his belly, his stomach, und drückte mit der rechten die Zigarre im Aschenbecker aus. So in this case, it's aus, ausdrücken, right, to press out. So if you hear what that is, you can sort of imagine it. If he's talking about die Zigarre in der, Aschenbe der Aschenbecher, this is just an ashtray, and Becher is like a little container. Um, Aschen is ashes, so it's an ashtray. He, he puts out, right? He presses out. He puts it out in the Aschenbecher, in the ashtray. So he lay his left hand carefully on his stomach and with his right put out the cigar in the... Im Aschenbecher aus. Put out the cigar in the... I forgot I just said it. Oh, whatever. Aschenbecher. Um, ashtray. He puts it on the ashtray. That, der Aschenbecher, den... Im Lutz hingestellt hatte, okay? That Lutz had put out for him, that had laid there for him, okay? Hinstellen, to lay it in this in this way, right? If you think of hin is from the speaker away, stellen is to place something, hinstellen would be to place it down and away, sort of. So that's, you can imagine he did that motion to the ashtray. Er sei, sagte er, Seit längerer Zeit nicht mehr so ganz gesund. Der Arzt wenigstens macht ein langes Gesicht. Okay? That's no good. This made me sad when I read it. Because it's going to be one of those... Well, we'll see. He, he, he was... So in this case, this is not dialogue now. This is back to the narrator speaking. So this is reported information. So this is not... This is saying his impression or his information that he's providing, not necessarily reality, although it could coincide with reality, he was, he said, seit längerer Zeit, for a rather long time, not so healthy anymore. Nicht mehr so ganz gesund. Der Arzt wenigstens, at least, the doctor at least, mache ein langes Gesicht. Again, Konjunktiv 2. 
because he's reporting the doctor, the doctor's actions. Der Arzt, wie at least the doctor, he's making a what? Langes Gesicht. Ein langes Gesicht machen is to make a long face. In English, we actually have that same expression. Why the long face, right? It's being used in a way we wouldn't quite use this in English. So when he says, der Arzt wenigstens mache ein langes Gesicht, the doctor is making a long face, it means the doctor is uh, not feeling too confident about this, this health problem he's having, okay? He's not, he's not, so the outlook is not good. According to the doctor, the, the doctor at least says the prognosis is not good. The outlook is very poor. Indicating he mo may likely be dying. Er leide oft an Magenbeschwerden und er bitte deshalb Dr. Lutz ihm einen Stellvertreter in der Mordsache Schmied beizugeben, der das Hauptsächliche ausführen könnte. Berlach wolle dann, in, dann den Fall mehr vom Schreibtisch aus behandeln. Okay. So, this long sentence here. He suffered, again, still Konjunktiv 2, so reporting what he says. He suffered often on Magenbeschwerden. So when he said he, he laid his hand on his Magen, that is, I can move this out of the way now, I just realized. That's his stomach. So Magenbeschwerden is complaints. Sich über etwas Beschwerden is to complain about something. So Magenbeschwerden are stomach complaints. He, so... So his stomach is causing him pain or, or problems. So it would be translated as like stomach problems. He often suffered from stomach problems. And er bitte deshalb Dr. Lutz ihm einen Stellvertreter in der Mordsache Schmied beizugeben. All right. To, and he asked for that reason, Dr. Lutz, to give to him, all right, to, to him a Stellvertreter means a deputy or a partner. This is the classic word for a cop's partner, or a, or a, could be a subordinate, but really just sort of a partner. Ein Stellvertreter in der Mordsache Schmied. Der Mord, die Mordsache, this is another great crime word, Mordsache. So in the murder case, in the matter of the murder of who? Schmied. Okay. So to beizugeben, beigeben would be to give along. Okay, give along, beigeben. So giving him a deputy along would be sort of like to confer, again, sort of confer, or to give, to send along with him, right? To give to him, to take along. Ein Stellvertreter, like a, who is it, who is it, a deputy or a partner? Okay, so who, what kind of Stellvertreter? Der das Hauptsächliche ausführen könnte. Remember, we learned last time, Hauptsache is the main thing. Die Hauptsache is the main thing. Okay, die Hauptsache, I'll write it here. My writing's a little small. Die Hauptsache is the main thing. So, hauptsächlich means mainly. Hauptsächlich means mainly. Das Hauptsächliche is the main thing. Again, <laughs> okay? So, it's a little redundant. So he, they could help him with the most important matters. They could, they could ausführen to direct or lead. So the, he wants this guy to take over the most important matters. Berlach wolle, Konjunktiv 2, dann den, Fa, dann den Fall mehr vom Schreibtisch aus behandeln. So von, at, from, von irgendwo aus means from out of somewhere. In this case, from where? His Schreibtisch, his desk. He wanted then to handle the case more so, mehr von, mehr, from from Schreibtisch, more so from his desk. He wanted to handle it more so from his desk. Lutz war einverstanden. Lutz agreed. I bet this guy is excited to get this old cranky guy behind a desk. Hand in your badge, Berlach. All right. <laughs> uh, wen wen denken Sie sich als Stellvertreter? Wen, denk, wen denken Sie sich als Stellvertreter? Fragte er. Who are you thinking of as a partner? He asked. Chance, sagte Berlach. Das kann eben Chance. Er ist zwar noch in den Ferien im Berner Oberland, aber man kann ihn ja heimholen. Right? He is, however, still on vacation in the Berner Oberland, just a place. Aber man kann ihn ja heimholen. Holen is to get or grab. Heim is home, especially as a verb prefix. So heimholen, 
to get him home, right? So, but we one could get him home. One can get him get him back home. Lutz entgegnete. He countered or or he responded. Ich bin mit ihm ein ich bin mit ihm einverstanden. Chance. Chance ist ein Mann, der immer bemüht ist, kriminalistisch auf der Höhe zu bleiben. Right? I agree. Chance is a man who bemühen is to give effort. So if you're if um, you're bemüht etwas zu tun, bemüht sein. This means you're willing and able. You're willing and able. So he's always ready and willing or willing and able to auf der Höhe, at the top, at the summit, the top, to stay at the top of his game, quote unquote, that's not said directly here, but that's sort of the way we have to translate in English, to stay at the top of his game regarding criminology. So he's criminalistically, he's, he's ready and willing criminalistically at the top to stay. Okay, that's what that means, literally, and it would translate to he's He's um, always ready to be at the top of his game for crime-related matters. Dann wandte er Berlach den Rücken zu. Okay. He turned his back to Berlach und schaute zum Fenster auf den Waisenhausplatz hinaus. Okay. Uh, he, tur he turned to the... Or he looked zum Fenster, to the window, auf den Waisenplatz hinaus. So, hinaus schauen. To look out from somewhere. So, so look out by way of the window onto the, auf den Akkusativ, onto the Waisenhausplatz. So this is Waisenhaus, orphanage. So this is by an orphanage. A lot of atmosphere going on. The orphanage playground. Der Volk, or so not necessarily playground, but it could, the yard or the court the plaza. So it might be a playground, but it could just be a place where there's children going outside and playing. Weisenhausplatz hinaus. Plötzlich überkam ihn eine unbindige Lust, mit Berlach über den Wert der modernen Wissenschaften und Kriminalistik zu probably reden. Oh, zu disputieren. Okay. Zu disputieren. To dis so to dispute. <laughs> so this guy talks about Scientology, sort of scientific criminology constantly. So suddenly he was overcome with an with an unending or an unrestricted desire, an un an undeniable or or unflinching desire, mit Berlach über den Wert der modernen wissenschaftlichen Kriminalistik zu disputieren, to dispute or to argue with Berlach over the over modern scientific criminology. Okay. This guy's kind of a comical character. What a what a nerd, Dr. Lutz. Okay. Er wandte sich um, aber Berlach war schon gegangen. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Berlach is clearly the Chad in this relationship. He turned around. He turned himself around, but Berlach was already gone. Okay. Wenn's auch schon. So let's hash out this sentence here. Boundary here. Wie es auch schon gegen fünf ging. All right. Gegen, remember, gegen a time, we talked about this earlier, is about that time. Okay. When it was already, when it already had about struck five, beschloss Berlach doch noch an diesem Nachmittag nach Twan zum Tatort zu fahren. So Berlach decided, doch... Again, doch. So in this case, what's doch doing? We'll find out. Beschloss Berlach doch noch an diesem Nachmittag nach Tfahren zum Tatort zu fahren. So, ignoring doch, Berlach decided, yet, upon this, or at this afternoon, to Tfahren, to the Tatort, to, to drive. To drive, to Tfahren, to the Tatort. Great word. Um, there's a... German TV show called Tatort, well beloved. This TV show, um, been running for a long time. I think it's still on. So Tat is a deed. It comes from Tun, right? Er Tat, right? So um, just as a noun, it's Tat, a deed. And Ort is a location. So the deed place, the deed location, is the scene of the crime. Okay, 
That's a great short word that means something very significant. And so this is used a lot in uh, Krimis, constantly. And there's even a show named Tatort. So he, to the scene of the crime. So um, when it had about struck five, uh, Berlach decided, uh, well, it was still today afternoon, to drive to Tvan, to the crime scene, to the crime scene in Tvan. So doch, what is doch doing? This is telling us he was thinking about not doing this, right? Because we just talked about how he's like, my stomach is sick, I'm dying, I need a partner, I want to sit behind my desk and sleep all the day. He didn't actually say that, but um, but now doch, it's saying, so despite what just happened, he's deciding to go to the scene of the crime directly. So he's not giving up yet on this whole thing. So, er nahm Blatter mit. It sounds, it's just a funky name. <laughs> Maybe it's a normal name. Er nahm Blatter mit, einen großen, aufgeschwemmten Polizisten, der nie ein Wort sprach, den Berlach deshalb liebte, und der auch den Wagen führte. Okay. Oh, sorry. Und der auch den Wagen führte. I'm not saying... Not, that's adding a little too much... Uh, too much um, unintended emotion to it, if I say that. So we took Blatter with him. So let's actually... Hash out the sentence from here to here. Okay. He took Blata with him, a large, bloated policeman, aufgeschwemmt, bloated, De, or, um, yeah, bloated would probably be the best one, or inflated, Polizisten, der nie ein Wort sprach, that never spoke a word, who, Berlach, for that reason, Berlach liked him for that reason, und der auch den Wagen führte, and he also drove the car. All right, so Berlach, too important to be driving no car. Blada, no blada, to aufgeschwemmter Huso. Oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay, maybe Berlach said that. No, I'm sure he's nice. In Tvan, um, yeah. okay. In Tvan würden sie von Klenar empfangen. Yay, Klenar is back. Yay, we love Klenar. In Tvan würden sie von Klenar empfangen. Again, what is this? You remember from earlier? Welcomed. In Twan, they were welcomed from Klena, who ein trotziges Gesicht machte. Right? Trotz, this, so this is easy to remember. Well, easy, quote unquote. Nothing in German is really that easy, but easier to remember. Trotzig, adjective endo, comes from trotz. Right? Trotz, as you, I'm sure, know, the word trotz means despite. Okay? Trotz means despite. So, despitey, is, you might say, it's despitey, it's uh, um, contradictory, right? Contradicting, contradicting, so in this case, trotzig means like defiant, okay? And that makes sense, he's making, machte, a defiant Gesicht, a defiant face, okay? Da er einen Tadel erwartete, Tadel is like a scolding or a reprimand, okay? That Tadel is a scolding or reprimand. Um, so he was expecting a reprimand. So he's he's looking uh, he's looking um, defiant. Um, der Kommissar war jedoch freundlich. So he was despite he was, however, friendly. The Kommissar was friendly, however. Schüttelte Klenan die Hand und sagte, sh shook Klenan's hand and said that. Um, schüttelte Klenan die Hand. Und sagte, dass es ihn freue, einen Mann kennenzulernen, der selber denken könne. Okay, let me block that out. Da, 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 da. So he shook Klenau's hand and said that it, he was glad to know a man, to get to know a man, to yeah, kennenlernen. It's a pretty funky verb, but it's one you learn early on because it's useful. Um... To know a man, to meet a man who, for himself, who could think for himself. Okay. Again, Kuna, this is reporting dialogue that's not said directly. That's what Kuna Ti Zwei is doing. Klina war über dieses Wort stolz. Right? He was happy over this word. Not literal one word, he said. Berlach didn't say one word to say all this. German can be concise sometimes, but not that concise. So over this comment is how you would translate it. He was proud about this comment. Obgleich er nicht recht wusste, wie es vom alten gemeint war. Even though he didn't quite, didn't properly know 
how it was meant from the old man, how the old man meant it. Er führte Berlach die Straße gegen den Tessenberg hinauf zum Tatort. Die Straße führen would be to take the road or to, if you're referring to someone else, to lead them down it. Okay, with führen. So that's what that's saying. So what kind of Straße? Gegen den Tessenberg hinauf. So against the Tessen mountain. Uh, mountains, maybe. Um, er führte Berlach. So he took him along the street that ran against the mountains. Hinauf, he took him up, rather. He took him up the street. Hinauf. Away and up. Zum Tatort. To the, remember what this is? Scene of the crime. The deed location. Blatter trottete nach und war mürrisch, weil man zu Fuß ging. Okay. Blatter, he, he trotted after. Trotted after them. And was sour or in a bad mood. He was grumpy. Mürrisch is grumpy. And was grumpy because they were going by foot. Okay. Poor Blata. He drives all the way down here. Can't he just wait in the car, man? But no, we need Blata. Blata may solve this whole thing for us. Okay. And that sentence, to do this nachträglich, unfortunately, um, blocked out there. Okay. Da, da, da. This here is one sentence. Da, 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 da. We're going to end the quote after that. Berlach verwunderte sich über den Namen Lambois. Oh, I see. That's why I was pausing because I my brain was working overtime to figure out if this is actually one sentence and it just failed, man. Berlach verwunderte sich über den Namen Lambois. Okay, he he wondered over the name Lambois. Lamlingen heißt das auf Deutsch. Klärt ihn keiner auf. Aufklären, to clear up something. So, Klina cleared up for him. What did he clear up for him? This, so, Berlach is like, what's the what's the, the deal with this name, Lambois? And then Klina says, Lamlingen heißt es auf Deutsch. In, it's, in German, it's called Lamlingen. So, that's a much more German name. Lamlingen als Lambois. It's much more German. Lambois is clearly the French one. And Berlach says, so, so, meinte Berlach. Das ist schöner. Okay, so we're seeing a feature of Switzerland. The the deadly, centuries-long feud between the French and German-speaking portions. Klinat is obviously a Frenchman, but of course he speaks German. Most people in Switzerland speak the other main language. Well, not most, I'll say, but many. And they speak English nowadays, but not back in 1948 or whenever this was. I believe it's 48. So, so, the German guy, obviously Berlach is a German name, working with Klena, a French guy, a native French speaker, rather, they're both Swiss. And so, of course, Berlach thinks it, it sounds much better in German. <laughs> so, sie kamen zum Tatort. They came to the scene, the scene of the crime. Die Straßenseite zu ihrer Rechten lag gegen Twan, zu ihrer Rechten lag gegen Twan und war mit einer Mauer eingefasst. Okay, it was, it was walled in. It was separated by a wall. So the street side to their right lay on the Twan side and was um, locked in or blocked off with a wall. Wo war das Wagen, Klina? Where was the car, Klina? Hier, antwortete der Polizist und zeigte auf die Straße. So here, the policeman answered, and Showed upon the street. Showed upon would mean to point to. He showed at the street. He pointed at the street. Fast in der Straßenmitte. Almost right in the middle of the street. Straßenmitte. Middle. Almost in the middle of the street. And the road. Und, da Berlach kaum hinschaute, and because Berlach was hardly looking in that direction, so Berlach asked the question, but he like doesn't really care. Klinan points, and Berlach's like, eh, whatever, and he's not looking. And so Klinan continues, Vielleicht wäre es besser gewesen, ich hätte den Wagen mit dem Toten noch hier stehen lassen. Right? Maybe it would have been better if I had left the car with the dead body here, standing here. Stehen lassen, right? Bleiben lassen, right? And there's a lot of other, or liegen lassen, so yeah. Liegen lassen, stehen lassen, um, words like that are literally to leave standing so it's it's the way to say to leave it there but as we know in german 
it's you want to be a little more accurate when you describe where something is. So you would say es steht, es liegt, es sitzt, right? Es hängt. Um, so instead of just saying let it lie, leave it lying here, it would be stehen lassen, leave it standing. Okay. So he says maybe it would have been better if I left the car with the dead man here. In German, they say they would say standing, leaving it standing. Wieso, sagte Berdach und schaute die Joafesen empor. Okay, empor, I like this word. It means to the heavens. So empor schauen, it would be to look to the heavens. Joafesen, Fesen is a rock in the sense of like a like Plymouth Rock, which I think Plymouth Rock is intended to be like sea cliffs. Is it an actual giant rock? I hope not. I I probably should know as an American, but I guess I don't. Um, so a rock isn't like cliffside. So the Jura cliffs, Jura cliffs, the Jura rock. So why, asked Berlach, and looked towards the Jura rocks up to the heavens. The Jura cliffs up to the heavens. So why do we say it this and just uh, instead of saying like hinauf, hinauf schauen, to look up? He said, why is he specifically empor, look to the heavens? Tote schafft man so schnell als möglich fort. Die haben nichts mehr unter uns zu suchen. Okay. Here's why. He's getting a little spiritual. Dead men, dead men, or dead people, schafft man so schnell als möglich fort. Fort schaffen is to get moving, to get transferred or get moving, get displaced. So dead men, one should, or one moves Dead men, or one gets them to where they need to be as fast as possible. Die haben nichts mehr unter uns zu suchen. All right? They have nothing more among us. So in this case, unter does not mean below, but it means under, or sorry, among. Among us, they have nothing more among us to search. Okay? Nichts zu suchen habe, haben, nichts zu suchen haben, nichts zu suchen haben, Okay, to have nothing to look for, all right, that is a phrase that means just um, to have no business somewhere, all right. Uh, hey, Alter, du hast ja nichts zu suchen, right? If someone says that to you, they're telling you to get the heck out, okay, to get, to get away. You have nothing, you got no business here, you got no business being here. So he says, so dead men should be moved along as, or they indeed move along as quickly as possible. They have nothing more to do. They have nothing, they don't belong among us anymore. Right? That's why he's looking up to the heavens. He's sort of imagining the guy's soul departing upwards past the Jura Felsen. So, next sentence goes to here. Sie haben schon recht getan, den Schmied nach Biel zu führen. Okay. You, Sie haben schon recht getan. You've done, you did properly. You did the right thing. You did properly, you did the right thing. Den Schmied. So again, he's calling him de, der Schmied. But den because of Akkusativ. He's calling him der Schmied because he's sort of being a little familiar or friendly with him. Okay. Den Schmied nach Biel zu führen. So you've done the right, you did the right thing. Driving or taking good old Schmied to Biel. Okay. Bialach trat an den Straßholz. First, maybe this is distracting more than helpful. Please tell me in the comments. Berlach trat an den Straßenrand und sah nach Twan hinunter. Oh, and it's really not helpful if I'm going to be blocking off the wrong sentences. I just assumed it was longer, but anyway. So Berlach trat, sentence here, sentence here, an den Straßenrand. So remember Straßenrand. He stepped up to. Not along, not an dem, but up to, an den Straßenrand. He stepped up to the side of the street in, und sah nach Twan hinunter. So this time hinunter, away from him, and down. So he looked down upon Twan, or in the direction of Twan. Nur Weinberge lagen zwischen ihm und der alten Ansiedlung. Okay? Sied, siedeln is to settle. So eine Ansiedlung is a settlement. Like sort of an, a sort of folksy way of saying a village or a small town. So Weinberge, Wein is wine. Berg is a mountain. So what are wine mountains? Good God. 
Oh, they're vineyards. That's a German word for vineyard. So only wine mountains, <laughs> only vineyards lay between him and the old settlement. Die Sonne war schon untergegangen. Okay. The, the sun had already, remember we learned, aufgehen would be to go up. Untergehen is to go down. And so the sun goes auf und it get, goes unter. Rauf und runter. Um, so the sun had, had already, has already set, had already set as he'd stepped up there. Okay. Die Straßen krümmte sich wie eine Schlange zwischen den Häusern und am Bahnhof stand ein langer Güterzug. Güterzug. Okay. Die Straßen krümmte sich, sich krümmen, right, is to twist or like, sort of like twist around each other, crumple around each other almost, wie eine Schlange, like a snake between the houses. So the streets like crisscrossed or twisted around each other like snakes between the houses. Und am Bahnhof stand ein langer Güterzug. Right? Güter is goods. Ein Zug is a train. So it's a goods train. What would that be? That is a freight train or a commerce train. So the streets twisted like a snake between the houses or undulated, maybe you might say. But it's more like a twisting kind of thing, I think. Or like crunch. Like you think of like pretzel almost. Und am Bahnhof stand ein langer Güterzug. Ein langer Güterzug. Okay. At the train station, there was a long freight train. Just sitting there. Next sentence here. I promise this is actually it. Technically, no, it's one, it's one sentence because it's a quote. I know the rules of grammar, I promise. Hat man den nichts gehört da unten, Klena? Fragte er. So, did no one hear anything down there, Klena? Okay. Das Städtchen ist doch ganz nah, da müsste man jeden Schuss hören. hören. Das Städtchen ist doch ganz nah, da müsste man jeden Schuss hören. Okay. The, the little city, he's calling it, he's sort of acting in a diminutive way. He's using the diminutive suffix, chen, with an umlaut. Das Städtchen, so the town, but it's hard to translate this directly because he's sort of talking about it in a cute way. That, that little town, right? The, the little town down there is pretty close. Da müsste man jeden Schuss hören. So, over there, people must have heard every shot. Last page. Man hat nichts gehört, als den Motor die Nacht durchlaufen, aber man hat nichts Schlimmes dabei gedacht. Okay? Man hat nichts gehört, als den Motor die Nacht durchlaufen, aber man hat nichts Schlimmes dabei gedacht. Okay? People, so again using, I haven't been going over this because it should be sort of clear to people. Man is talking about someone in general. So it's sort of almost like the passive voice or talking about people in general. Okay. Nobody, in this case I'll translate it as like nobody. Nobody heard anything else besides the motor running through the night. Running through the night. Durchlaufen. This could be one verb together, but it would be maybe non-standard, so we chose not to do it there. So nobody heard anything besides the motor running through the night, running all night. Aber man hat nichts Schlimmes dabei gedacht. But during that, in that occasion, nobody thought anything bad of it. Nobody thought anything bad of it, or anything bad, yeah. Natürlich, wie sollte man auch? I've messed up again. This is going to take a lot of practice. It might take me longer to learn this than it took me to learn how to speak German. Natürlich, wie sollte man auch? Naturally, why would anyone? Okay. Er sah wieder auf die Rebberge. Right. He, he looked down again onto the Rebberge. So, uh, eine Rebbe, I think that's the word. Yeah, I think it's eine Rebbe. That is something I also learned in the course of this. So, Reb, as a prefix, Reb, sorry, Reb, Reb, Berge, is Berge of Reb, Rebbe, Reben. So those are grapes. That's just the... It's not Trauben, right? Those are... That's what we usually know for grapes. Die Trauben. Or Weintrauben. And die Weintrauben are grapes. Wine grapes, particularly. But die Reben is Swiss... The Swiss-German word for grapes. 
That's what they're referred to in Switzerland. And there's also this, I did, I did not, I do not know deeply about grapes in German. I promise I'm no genius. I did have to look this up. I found out while I was looking up what this is that, um, uh, that's also used in standard German for certain kinds of grapes, right? So, so Rippberge is literally just, again, it's vineyards, but set in like a Swiss German way. Um, this may, they may be used, certainly, I will say for sure, the, that's probably the word for grapes in certain dialects of German as well, um, especially near the Swiss border, um, maybe even in Austria. Why not? Kartoffel versus Erdapfel. Who would win? Wie ist der Wein dieses Jahr, Klina? Wie ist der Wein dieses Jahr, Klina? How is the wine this year, Klina? Okay. Ends there. How is the wine this year, Klina? Gut. Wir können ihn ja dann versuchen. Good. We could even try some. Das ist wahr. Ein Glas neuen möchte ich jetzt gerne trinken. Okay. That's true. A glass, a glass of neuen... Okay, so at first I thought, is this a brand? But it turns out it's something called Neue Wein. Ein Neue. Neue Wein or Ein Neue. Again, I'm not an expert on winemaking or grapes. Make sure that's in frame, yep. Neue Wein or Ein, this is how he's using it, Ein Neue. Is new wine or a new one, quote unquote, a new one. What does that mean? Well, there's something called Neue Wein, which is like raw wine. And because I don't know anything about wine, I don't know what this is even called in English. But it's basically wine before it's been treated. It's basically the closest thing you can get to like alcoholic grape juice with junk in it. Right? Grape junk. Maybe it's healthy for you. Not the stems though. Gross. Okay. Um, and those soak up all the pesticides. But no pesticides in Swiss wine. It's all the best wine in the world. Um, start a start a wine war in the comments if you want. Any French people, any people from California, please start a wine war. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, das ist wahr. Ein Glas Neuen. So not um, uh, a brand, but a glass of no of Neue Wein. Right? He wants a, a glass of Neue. Möchte ich jetzt gerne trinken. I'd really love, I'd really love a glass of Neue Wein right now. Und er stieß mit seinem Recht, so. Und er stieß mit seinem rechten Fuß auf etwas Hartes. He, he struck with his right foot upon something hard. Hmm. Er bückte sich, he bent down, Und hielt eine vorne breit gedrücktes längliches kleines Metallstück zwischen den hageren Fingern. Okay. Er bückte sich, bent down, und hielt, grabbed, ein vorne breit gedrücktes längliches kleines Metallstück. So this is all one thing. Wide pressed. Pressed wide. Breit gedrückt. Okay. Pressed wide. Länglich, so lengthy, right? Not just long, but sort of lengthy. It's just really, in this case, it just really means long. It's another way of saying long. Länglich is kleines, small, metallstück, piece of metal. So he pressed it, picked it up between, zwischen den hageren Fingern, between his haggard or weathered fingers. Haggard or weathered fingers. Kleiner und Blatter sahen neugierig hin. Klina und Blatter looked, looked to it, looked at it, curiously, neugierig. Eine Revolverkugel, sagte Blatter. It's a rev so Kugel is, uh, it means a, like a ball or a sphere, but it, nowadays it means a bullet. Okay. Eine Revolverkugel, so a revolver bullet, said Blatter. Wie Sie das wieder gemacht haben, Herr Kommissar, staunte Klinar. All right, this is a this is a great one. So this almost implies like there's a little bit of history. You've done it again, right? How you have done it again would be how they say it in German. It's like my how you've done it again. It would, in translate translating into English, you'd say, "You've done it again, Herr Kommissar." Right? Staunte Klinar. I'm just imagining like a Sherlock Holmes and Watson kind of thing. By Jove, Sherlock, you've done it again. So Klinar staunte. 
So he, this is like, he, he was shocked, right? But when you say it with dialogue in German, it would translate to, he said shocked, or he said in surprise. And Berlach, this is a great line, and one, right here when I read this, I was like, I like Berlach a lot, actually. Now I like him. Das ist nur Zufall, sagte Berlach, und sie gingen nach Tvan hinunter. It's just a coincidence, <laughs> or it's just dumb luck, said Berlach. And they went down, they went down to Tvan, okay? Berlach just finds this thing, and, and Klinan says, you've done it again! And Berlach says, no, nah, it's just, I just, just, I wasn't looking for anything, this is just lucky. I don't, I don't know what it even means yet. So, that's not Zufall, like the Berlach. So, I didn't do anything, it's just, just a coincidence. Okay. So, with that... Nice long episode. We are done with Kapitel 2 of Der Richter und sein Henker. Things are heating up. Kind of. Slowly heating up. <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to do the thing where I say please leave a comment and a like and even subscribe if you want to uh, watch more of these. Um, there's plenty of content in here, hopefully, for you to keep watching them over and over or watch them in chunks. So please do do the thing where you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and uh, I will keep doing this book, keep on trucking through it, and we'll keep on learning German with Der Richter und sein Henker. Bis bald. See you guys again very soon. Bye-bye. Tschüss.